The difference between someone who has done zero and someone who has done even five or 10 is enormous. Algorithms are the number one in security for every developer type I've ever met before. It's not just front end. It's the main reason why we stay at these jobs that we don't love anymore year after year, long after they've expired. I've been in literally hundreds of interviews, mostly as an interviewer, but also quite a few times as the interviewee, as the candidate. The technical interview process is damn stressful for both parties. And you and I both know, if you had a ton of confidence in your ability to solve all those problems, algorithms, you know, in person or online, that you would be shooting for a much higher position in your career a lot quicker, or at least more often. When it comes to algorithms and data structures as a UI guy, for the longest time, I was a non-believer. Actually worse, I was a hater. I thought the tests didn't make any sense, more on that later, until I had to face the challenge myself not too long ago. What I realized was the complete opposite of what I thought for the past 15 years. And I wanna share that with you, specifically as a hiring manager. Like I said, I've experienced both sides of the interview process for many, many years. And here's my perspective on algorithms as part of the interview process. So here we go, here's the truth about time someone said it. So I'm gonna jump right into it, but uh, please let me finish, okay? I know that you might think that you know what I'm about to say and what my arguments are gonna be, but please let me finish, okay? Cool. I learned programming as a creative visual guy. I was a musician, the art school type. I only studied computer science for one year before I switched to multimedia because it was uh, you know, just more creative. I got to have more fun with animation, video, audio, uh, flash, Photoshop, things like that. But I liked coding too, and I was really good at it from the beginning. And so I didn't want to give that up. And there was a huge career outlook in computer science, and it was really obvious to all of us even back then. By the way, this is 2005. Anyway, so I combined the two, my understanding of uh, computer science and logical programming with my passion for the presentation layer and uh, visual work and creative work like that. And I became the UI guy uh, pretty much at every company I worked at. It was a lot of fun. You know, I'm talking about all the visual work that had a programming side to it. Everything UI UX related. But what I missed out on was the conventional algorithms and data structure training uh, that I never got really. So I ended up skipping that part of the craft. And I never really needed to do them. I mean, as a front end person, you don't have to deal with those things on a daily basis, right? Until you go to do an interview at a company that cares about that and interviews with that format. Somehow Google made it the industry standard to test people's ability to sort arrays from scratch. So for the past 15 years of my career, I thought that was complete nonsense. I have array.sort and that does it for me. And if I have a particular sorting logic, I can just put it in the function and it does it for me or use Lodash. What's the point of knowing different kinds of sorting methods? You know, quick sort, bubble sort, and f this sort, and f that sort. I never had to do any of them and probably never will either. And that's a good argument, right? Most of you watching probably have the same viewpoint, which is if I never have to do this on a day-to-day -day basis, why do I need to know it? And most of you watching refuse to do those interviews or just avoid them altogether. So first, let's get that out of the way. I understand you and I am one of you, yous. But stop, okay? Everybody just stop. We've all been completely wrong about this whole thing. Point number one, and this is the most important one, the purpose of algorithms is not to see whether or not you could traverse a tree because you might have to do that on Wednesdays. The point is to see whether or not you can think through a abstract problem that is one level more complicated than the basics of your job, whatever the job is. When someone interviews you, they should be looking for one thing only, the skill required for you to be successful at that job. Do we agree on that? I hope so. So the question becomes, what is the skill required to be a successful programmer coder today? The job of the today's programmer is not to memorize an API and know everything by heart, although we used to think that that was the job. It's to be able to navigate a problem, find multiple solutions, and then find the best solution 
and then be able to reason for that best solution and explain it to the people around you. And then ultimately write it in code. And that is exactly what algorithms force you to do every time. I mean, think about it. We are problem solvers, right? We are not memorization machines. Your IDE already does that part for you. When you type array dot, you get all these beautiful methods with their explanations and sometimes with some examples. We're so spoiled. So we don't interview for those things anymore. I mean, we used to back in 2009, I remember asking candidates to name me methods on strings and that was kind of dumb, but that's what the industry was doing back then. But the job has evolved and so should the interview process. In fact, I think part of the job description for every job out there, for every coder, should be the ability to solve problems. And that's where algorithms come in. They are these self-contained, isolated mini problems that you can throw at someone and see what they do with it for the next 45 minutes. If I ask you to build me a React component, that won't really tell me a lot about you. All that's gonna tell me is whether or not you've built a React component before we met. And honestly, I could care less about that. You having done React before is almost meaningless if you can't adapt and adjust and evolve with the technologies that that job requires you to know. So the technology is not the point. It's your ability to solve problems. I mean, React is a good example because they are actually notorious about changing their API and one day it's Redux and then tomorrow we have hooks and Redux it may or may not be relevant anymore. I hate to tell you, but it was never about Redux to begin with. <laughs> so when an interviewer asks you to solve an algorithm problem with them, it's because that's the way they learn the most about you and how you think through problems and how you go about solving them. I've worked with so many developers who were lovely people, who dare I say, memorized an API or learned a framework and came in and got the job, but they didn't know how to solve problems independently. And sadly, they failed because code, just like in life, is nothing but a series of problems thrown at your face to see whether or not you survive. Wow, that is dark but also true. So to wrap up point number one, a good interviewer doesn't care if you write the perfect algorithm with the perfect own notation, the perfect space time complexity, although some do and I'll get to that. More importantly, they wanna know how you approach a problem. Do you ask questions? Do you ask for help? Do you collaborate? How do you collaborate? How do you communicate? Do you get defensive? Do you get offensive? Do you get offended? Do you think about edge cases? What do you think about the input output format? How do you handle errors, for example? These questions say so much about you and your thought process. They're essential for placing you in the right place, in the right team for the right project. It's okay if you don't know the answer to some of these questions. If you have never experienced these before, that's fine. Some of them you can study for, and others you just pick up along the way as sort of as, as scars <gasps> as you get more experience. But it's not crazy to think that your future, potential future employer wants to know the answer to some of these questions, right? They say quite a bit about you and your general mentality towards problem solving. Side note, certain interviewers at certain companies, <laughs> which, which company is that? Which, was that obvious? They missed the point that I just made. They forget that. They forget why they're asking these technical questions to begin with. And if you don't nail the perfect algorithm with the perfect space-time complexity and minimal memory usage and all that good stuff in 45 minutes under pressure while two people or three people sometimes are watching over your shoulder, they will reject you for that job. And that's too bad. But you know what? F them. The reality is in real life, you have more than 45 minutes, usually. Plus you can Google things and you don't have people watching over your shoulder. So they're bad interviewers too, is what I'm saying. So don't beat yourself up about it if you, if you get one of those. Ah, uh, dude, Ginger's the best. Point number two, if you ignore the fact of algorithms and the fact that they're part of our industry standard right now, you will end up missing out on a lot of great opportunities. Most cool companies with cool products that you and I use on a daily basis, for better or for worse, uh, algorithms are part of their interview process. So you'd be cutting yourself from so many amazing places to work if you just simply refuse to learn these damn things and refuse to go on these interviews, right? So just go and learn these things, okay? That was a little harsh. Point number three, 
you get good like real quick. I remember I did a, a 11 day uh, sort of algorithm training and it was crystal clear to me how much better I was every single day than the day before. I'm not even kidding here. I'm not just saying this. It was, it was actually very noticeable to myself. Every single problem you solve, you improve, whether on lead code or hacker rank or whatever you use, they're all pretty much the same. It instantly makes you a better engineer, no doubt about it. For me, at the end of the 11 days, I was a different person, honestly. I was a different level coder, I thought. I knew so much more than less than two weeks before. It's a bizarre consequence of doing these exercises, by the way, but I used to think you had to do these things for years and years before you got good. But the difference between someone who has done zero and someone who has done even five or 10 is enormous. So get going. If you're wondering how, how to start also, I have courses and other material that I'll, I'll throw at you at the end of this. Point number four, they're fun. They're actually really, really fun. And I'm not just saying that as a nerd, just sitting here going, algorithms are fun because I have nothing else to do. No, I have a lot of to do. Like I live in New York, okay? And I am like a really social person. I know all the cool places and <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and I'm still telling you, these things are actually really fun. Once you know what you're doing, which comes to you quick after a couple of days, and you can explain them, they actually become a, a, a huge boost to your confidence. And that alone is really fun to experience. I don't know, maybe it's because I've always had this guilt about uh, you know skipping them and not really spending too much time on them no more than a few hours here and there at a time. It was like a huge weight off my shoulders when I did the investment for those, again, 11 days only. And you know what, even if they weren't fun, or even if the first few aren't fun for you, right? they're a part of our craft, they're part of our industry standard, and you know, let's go, it's time to learn. With that said, there are multiple ways to learn anything, right? There's stupid ways and there's smart ways. You can be efficient or you can just waste a bunch of time. So the question is, you know, how do I start? Uh, how do I get better? What exercises do I do first? What is the flow that I need to, to follow to make sure I don't skip any steps? What are the different types of algorithms that are out there anyway? Well, funny you should ask. I documented every day I spent learning algorithms in my training and I kept all the code and I kept even some of the, the, the thought process that I had go approaching a lot of these problems. I've accumulated a lot of material that I'm actually gonna post the majority of it here on YouTube. So if you're interested, uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you want a step-by-step -step process, like an actual course with uh, an instructor and homeworks and things like that, go to colorcode.io, go to my site and sign up there. It's free and you actually can message me there. You have a chance to work with me directly and uh, I'll work with you. Uh, I wanna make sure that you don't make those dumb mistakes that I made, you know, wasting some of the time that I did. There's a lot of material out there. You wanna make sure you cut through some of the bull and uh, get to work. Or otherwise you can stay here and uh, watch the algorithm series that I'm gonna post right here on this YouTube channel. Okay, with that, sending you much love and uh, let's go. It's time to figure these things out once and for all. Okay, till next time, see you later.